students. So form three, chapter four, reactivity of metals. Now, because there is the word metals there, and in this topic, you'll be hearing a lot of names like molecules, ions, atoms, compounds, and all that. So we would like to do an introduction, and I would like to explain to you all a little bit about these names. So all these names, basically, you have already learned in your form one, okay? So let's go into one by one, yeah? Starting with the first one, which is atom, okay? So if you can see atom, the picture I draw is just one ball there, and the ball with name is called particle, okay? And if you can see that, there is only one particle there. So therefore, atom, the name, okay, the meaning, it consists of one particle only, okay? Whereby, if you look at the second one, molecules, if you look at the pictures here, there are two balls which I draw there, which means there is more than one, okay? Remember this, huh? molecules, there is more than one. But I've also drawn something like this, one which has both same color and one which is one black and one white. That is trying to tell you that molecules, you got same type and you got different type. So what is the meaning of molecules? Molecules, they consist of more than one particles, same or different type. So that is the second one. Next, number three, we have got ions, okay? Now, ions, if you notice, I'm drawing the same thing like molecules, which is different, which means both the names are different. So in ions, the first name will be metal, and the second name will be non-metal, okay? So what is the meaning of ions? Ions are a combination of metals and non-metals, okay? And the next point you also need to know is that ions, they have got something we call as charges, okay? And what are the charges we have inside the ions? You go back to your form two under the subject of water and solution, you will study there are only two types of ions. One is scat ions and one is anion. So the same thing goes here. Ions, we have positive and we have the negative. All positive belongs to the metal and all negative belongs to the non-metal except for one person, which is hydrogen. Now, I want you to remember this, yeah? Only hydrogen has got a positive charge. The rest are all negative, okay? And of course, many students will also ask me this. Sir, how you know whether the thing is metal or non-metal? Very simple. This is the formula. Remember the formula that all metals, the name must finish with UM. So if you can see the list down here, we have potassium, we have sodium, we have calcium, we have magnesium, we have aluminium, okay? But there are certain names which don't have UM. For example, like this, we have got zinc, we have got iron, we have got copper, tin, and also lead. Now, even though these names don't have UM, okay, because they have their own scientific name. For example, zinc, you just add the word UM there, it becomes zincum. The scientific name for zinc is zincum. Iron will be ferrum. Copper will be cuprum. Tin will be stenum. And lead will be plumbum. So from here, as a conclusion, all metals, the name is finished with UM. And what I explained earlier was that, yes, correct, even though the name finished with UM, but there are two important metals which doesn't finish with UM. The first one we have is something we call as helium, and the second one is ammonium. Now, even though helium and ammonium, the name finishes with UM, they are known as non-metal, okay? So this is the first part you all need to know before you go into your chapter four in your form three, which is reactivity of metal. 